Uh, good day, everyone. My name is Clarice Aquino from the Institute for Leadership and Governance. And I'm so happy to see you all. Welcome to our virtual seminar on federalism entitled Draft Federalism, Real Empowerment to the Local Levels. We are also live via Pimentel Institute Facebook page. Again, thank you to our speaker, reactor, moderator, and of course, to our dear participants. We are gathered today remotely or from a distance, but still we should be thankful that we are given this opportunity to discuss topic of national importance. Just a little background of the Pimental Institute for Leadership and Governance. Uh, it is an unstuck nonprofit foundation founded by the late Senate President Nene Pimentel in August of 2010, shortly before he ends his term as a senator in June of 2010. The Pimentel Institute for Leadership and Governance was established to promote competent, ethical, and innovative leadership in public sector, advocate for political and economic reforms needed to strengthen Philippine democracy and engage in national discourse on key issues that affect the lives of Filipinos. And that's why we have uh, the reason why we have this federalism seminar. As I mentioned, PALG is a nonprofit foundation. Our programs and activities will not be possible, of course, without the help of our sponsors and partners. And one of them is the Hans Idol Foundation, headed by resident representative, Mr. Gats Heineke. And for this event, we also have the College of Continuing Advanced and Professional Studies of the University of Makati, headed by Dean Ederson Tapia. The Hans Idol Foundation and the Pimental Institute is supporting education and information activities on federalism. Our main objective is to provide broader and deeper knowledge of philosophy and the principles of federalism as a system of government and help key representative of government and members of our society gain better and more comprehensive understanding of federalism. It is also in my opinion that it's better that we have knowledge on the issues such as federalism before we say yes or we make a statement whether we agree or not on a particular matter. So this is our second lecture series on federalism. During our first lecture, we had as our speaker, Constitutional Committee Chairman and former Chief Justice Renato Puno, who discussed the overview of the Bayanihan federalism draft and uh, uh, topics on judiciary. So just some reminders, please be informed that we will record this event. Please stay on mute when you are not talking. If you have anything to say or you have uh, questions, especially during our open forum, please write it down in our chat box. And uh, for those who have, uh, for those who are watching via Facebook Live, you can write, you can also write your messages or questions at our comment section. So at the end of the program, may we request everyone to please answer our survey form. Link will be posted at our chat box. So before we start the program, allow me to introduce and say thank you to Attorney Ryan Estebes, Unifas OIZ Executive Director, for accepting the task of being our MC and uh, moderator for today's event in spite of his busy schedule. He finished his uh, Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy at the Rogationist Seminary College, Adamson University, Bachelor of Law at the University of Santo Tomas, Legazpi, Master of Arts in Religion and Education at the Ateneo Manila University and Master of Arts in Public Policy at the National Graduate Research Institute for Policy Studies or GRIPS in Tokyo, Japan. Attorney Estevez entered government service as legislative staff of Senate uh, of former Senate President Aquilino Nene Pimentel Jr. after passing the bar exam in 2007. When Senator Pimentel term ended, he worked in the House of Representatives under the Bagong Generation Party List Representative Bernadette Herrera D. He also became he also uh, became the Chief of Staff, uh, the, the political officer of former uh, Senate President Coco Pimentel in, two, in 2016. Prior to his designation as OIZ Executive Director, he was appointed by President Duterte as Undersecretary of the Presidential Legislative Liaison Officer in the House of Representatives on January 6 of 2017. 
And on June 2, 2020, he left PLLO and joined the team. Attorney uh, Ryan is also appointed as the newly deputy executive director of CHED, but he is presently dedicating himself as OIC executive director of UNIPAS Secretariat, which uh, supports the UNIPAS board in carrying out their functions under Republic Act 10687, otherwise known as the UNIPAS Act, and implementing student financial assistance program under RA 10931 or the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act. To formally start our program, I will now turn over you to our host, moderator, Attorney Ryan Estevez, who is also a senior fellow of PILG. Attorney Ryan. Thank you, Clarice. Uh, I'm so happy to be here once again and to see familiar faces. Um, um, and uh, truly, this is a very good um, uh, avenue for for uh, you know our discussion, especially on this topic on Bayanian federalism. So to formally start our program, uh, may I call on the Dean of University of Makati, uh, our also our senior fellow also at the PALG, uh, Dean Emerson Tapia, to give us the welcome remarks. Dean? Thank you very much, uh, Yusek Ryan, Clarice, and uh, everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you. Um, I'm also happy to see our friends from Hans Idol Foundation who have been very um, strong supporters of this advocacy. You know? um, the quest for federalism actually started mostly as an academic uh, undertaking way back in the 1970s. And the people who have been involved in this struggle, if you will, are very familiar to us. You know? um, the academic work, thankfully, um, got a proper proper attention under the administration of President Duterte. And there was um, serious moves really to amend the constitution towards that direction. And we're very happy and lucky this afternoon that one of the members of that committee that was constituted to review the 1987 constitution is here with us to give us and share his thoughts on uh, Bayanihan federalism, real empowerment at the local levels. levels. And uh, maybe just as a background information, even before federalism occupied the center stage of the discussion in politics prior to the 2016 elections, we at the Pimentel Institute and at the Pimentel Center at the University of Makati at that time have been sponsoring several roundtable discussions already on, on this advocacy that was started by Senator Pimentel a long, long time ago. No? Even at that time when it was not popular to talk about federalism, we hosted a few um, few uh, seminars and roundtable discussions on the topic. When it finally hit the ground, the University of Makati, in partnership with the PLLO, also through the efforts of Yusek Ryan and the late Secretary uh, Sitoy, spearheaded at that time the biggest federalism summit in the whole country. And we were very privileged to have been part of the conversation. Um, but the, as we say, the conversation and the quest for, for better governance continues and federalism is, serious, is certainly one of um, the models that we are looking at and advocating. So as you know, there's, there's a range of studies by various, various groups to shift to a federal form of government. And I guess part of the discussion today would also be in the context of the Mandanas ruling, people who are involved in the local government um, sector, whether academics and practitioners are very um, keen in observing as to what would uh, come out of the Mandanas ruling in relation to Executive Order 138. And a lot of the local government um, chief executives I know are already sort of going back to the drawing board and recalibrating their plans as a way to complying with what will happen in the EO138. And so I think we're very lucky this afternoon because si Prof. Ed Tayaw would not only look at federalism from a theoretical point of view because he's been, and more importantly, I guess, also look at it from the lenses of somebody who has, who has seen um, the reality at the ground. Uh, si Prof. Ed is not only an academic, although we know him primarily as an academic, a political analyst, but he's also done a lot of work at, um, with local governments. And so um, it is also within that context that I'm very thankful and privileged to be listening to uh, Professor Edmund Tayo's lecture this afternoon. So 
Once again, I welcome all the participants in our lecture series. This is not the first and this is certainly not the last. And I hope you continue to support uh, the PILG and Hans Seidel Foundation in, in our activities in the future. So thank you very much again, Clarice, for inviting us to be partners in this endeavor. So Yusek Ryan, back to you. Thank you, Dean Emerson. Uh, thank you also for setting the directions for this uh, lecture series and uh, giving us additional uh, background information on this novel advocacy. And uh, I was really happy that you mentioned our, our uh, um, partnership before when I was with PLLO. And uh, it's also good that you emphasize that uh, there's a need for you know, greater or more discussion, especially in the relation of this Mandana's ruling. So um, at this point in time, I would like to ask uh, a message from uh, the project officer of the Hans Seidel Foundation, Ms. Carolyn, Carolyn Lee. Ms. Carol. Thank you very much, Yusek Estevez. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Dean Tapia. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Attorney Michael Henry Yusinko. Of course, also to Professor Edmund Tayao and to all our participants. Thank you very much for uh, being here. I'm so, so glad you could all uh, come this afternoon, attend this activity. Uh, I'll be it, it's uh, online. Our resident representative, uh, Mr. Gatzheinige would have loved to be here to see you all again, to uh, be able to touch base again, but he will not be able to make it for this activity. So I'll just uh, quickly say a few words. Um, we're, well, the Hans Eidel Foundation is really um, honored to be working with the Bimentel Institute for Leadership and Governance in this endeavor. From 2016 to 2019, uh, we went around pretty much Clarice nationwide uh, conducting activities, providing that uh, platform for people to be able to exchange ideas, talk about federalism, basically to initiate that conversation, right? And uh, that, that's the important thing about this. For, for last year, we, we had another activity as uh, Larissa had mentioned earlier, and we're glad to be continuing again this year, and we look forward to more uh, to come. Now, the Hanseido Foundation is a German NGO, so we totally have uh, no opinion about whether or not the, the Philippines is better off uh, with federalism or without. Uh, the idea really is, well, we have been here for more than 40 years, working with local partners, uh, building up democracy, good governance, and what is important is for us to really provide that platform for people to be able to engage in that discussion so that they learn more about the, uh, the system, as uh, Clarice mentioned, as a uh, system of government. What is it really? And um, there were talks about um, how it might have been had we already had a federal system with this um, pan pandemic coming in. We've had talks with, uh, we're in both uh, Professor Edmund Tayo had been a speaker and also Attorney Michael Henry Yusinko had been speaker. And I believe also Attorney Ryan Estevez, no? And uh, many have also raised the question, why talk about federalism at a time when, you know, you have this pandemic ongoing, we have other concerns. But the, some also pointed out that maybe this is also a good time so that we can really set forth, okay, maybe we really need to look into our system, what could be helpful, you know, to prepare us for the next similar event, for example. So uh, we're really happy to be able to support this activity. And uh, we look forward to a fruitful exchange and hopefully everybody will leave this activity uh, better informed and better equipped to make uh, informed decisions should the time the, uh, when the time comes. Yeah, that's all. Good afternoon to everyone. 
Thank you, Ms. Carol, and thank you to Hans Idol Foundation, whom I had uh, personally uh, had a chance to work with and actually travel overseas. No, I was so happy. I was one uh, once a delegate of uh, Hans Idol Foundation and PILG. We, we traveled, uh, I think, uh, before the the pandemic uh, in in Germany. It was a really, really a uh, very uh, you know educating experience for me and and to my. Uh, and to my uh, agency. So through you, truly your support to the PILG and the Filipino people uh, is really commendable, especially in, in this area of uh, good governance and emphasizing the need for awareness and informed decision you know, on this matter about uh, uh, federalism. So uh, to continue our program, I would like to introduce uh, our, I'm, I'm, I'm so honored to introduce uh, a colleague and uh, an expert, you no, know, uh, especially in this um, in this uh, discussion on federalism, our speaker for today has been engaged in decentralization and local governance research and development work for more than ten years now. Ten years, pala kala ko ano na eh, mga fifty years na ito. Eh. He has been the executive director of the Local Government Development Foundation or the LogoDef the pioneer non-government organization working on decentralization and local governance since 2008. So with LogoDef, uh, he organized the Philippine Consortium on Good Local Governance, a network of key local governance stakeholders composed of leagues of local governments, the academic and civil society, as well as development organizations and related national government agencies in the year 2009. He currently serves as the PCGLG's uh, founding secretary general. And he also uh, uh, been uh, asked to work on various development projects here and abroad, and has also written and edited various publications and papers on local governance. He served as the Philippine expert in the evaluation of projects funded and supported by the EU or the European Union in the Philippines. He has been uh, consulted by the Conrad Adenauer in the Kingdom of Jordan for the drafting of their decentralization law. He served also as the key senior expert in Khyber Pakhtunwa, the decentralization project of uh, GIZ in Pakistan. He has also been invited to speak in various international events on decentralization and local governance in various countries. So you see this guy is really a well-traveled person. no? So our speaker is currently a fellow of political science in Leibniz uh, University of Hanover and a faculty member of the Department of Political Science, University of Santo Tomas. I always call him Dean. No? Napapagama lang ko siya palaging Dean. So he serves as consultant to various government agencies and government officials and also to international donor organizations. In 2018, he was appointed no, by President Duterte as member of the Constitutional Committee to review the 1987 Constitution. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you our guest speaker for this afternoon, uh, Professor Edmond Tayao. Prof Ed, take it away. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Maraming salamat, Yusek Ryan, for that very uh, long introduction. I would have uh, wanted to uh, just to be mentioned as uh, Ed Dio. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, it's been a long journey, I have to say, and uh, it's a continuing struggle. I remember uh, when uh, I was uh, starting uh, as uh, someone pushing for further decentralization with the late Terry Dumugo. <clears throat> I'm sure, of course, uh, Yusek uh, Ryan and uh, Larissa, of course, would remember the old guy the uh, i have to say mentor of mentors you know, i learned a lot from the guy and uh, every now and then we we'll share lunch uh, with this uh, favorite ding ding and at that time i would always just smile whenever he says we've been fighting for the revision of the code for the longest time and uh, nothing is happening eh, syempre, at that time medyo bata -bata pa tayo, and i'd uh, always say Dali lang yan. i'm sure uh, it can be pushed no and uh, lo and behold, no, uh, I started 2007 in uh, in, in Logodef, 
took over as ED in 2008, and now it's 2021. And we're still fighting for that uh, revision and for that uh, system change that uh, we've uh, been hoping. And uh, as uh, Yusek Ryan mentioned, uh, I was uh, very glad to have been appointed in uh, 2018, worked with them, um, you know, I have to say, uh, uh, most of them legal luminaries no, in, in the country. And uh, at that time, we were really hopeful that uh, finally we'll get that uh, system change moving. And uh, again, unfortunately, uh, although, albeit, uh, of course, we managed to come up with the with now a concrete, uh, what, uh, locally developed model, so to speak. That because if you talk about federalism or parliamentarism or what have you, we always look at other countries as models, and uh, usually discussions would uh, start with, anong model ba yung pinag-uusapan natin? Eh, mali nga yung ganong approach because we cannot just, uh, you know, uh, look at a particular country, uh, country's model and uh, uh, copy it and uh, adapt it to ourselves. It's uh, uh, something that, uh, uh, well, really not going to work among others, public institutions uh, all over the world develop as a result of a country's history and as a response, no? as a response to uh, much of the country's uh, problems. And so this is the reason why we, uh, let me start uh, sharing my uh, screen now. Uh, this is the reason why uh, we uh, call our uh, draft uh, model as Bayanihan Federalism or the Bayanihan uh, draft uh, constitution. You know? um, I remember when we were starting that, uh, of course, we were already expecting that there would be opposition to it, but uh, we weren't expecting that the uh, opposition would really be that effective, especially from within. No? Uh, I, I don't want to go into much more details, but uh, those uh, who we thought were uh, together with us at the outset, suddenly, uh, and so uh, that, uh, to my mind, uh, contributed to the demise of uh, uh, this effort to uh, finally effect, no? systemic change. But uh, apart from that, when we started, there were uh, opposition uh, to the uh, effort saying that should be uh, problem driven and so on. But, but actually, you don't even have to insist that it should be problem driven because it's the only approach that's uh, logical to follow. As I've said, no? you can't just uh, look at a particular country's model and adopt it to uh, your uh, situation. No? And uh, I've seen this in many cases, as uh, mentioned by uh, Yusek Ryan in uh, his very generous uh, introduction. No? I've uh, seen this in many developing countries, uh, especially when uh, it's this the uh, Arab Spring started. No? Many of the uh, countries in that part of the world started uh, uh, decentralizing and considering uh, federalizing precisely because of uh, the thinking that they have to strengthen democracy as a uh, response no, to the many uh, challenges or issues that uh, uh, haunt them no, as, a, as a state. And uh, so when we uh, started in the consultative committee, uh, immediately we started looking at uh, what's the situation right now, parang benchmarking ba? You know, uh, again, because of the experience uh, doing development work, uh, I always have to start with the benchmark. Asa na ba tayo ngayon? Kasi it's very easy to say that when you introduce a particular uh, this intervention, it's very easy to say it's because of this intervention that we've reached this particular part and so on. But uh, if you start with the benchmark, you could very well attribute some uh, milestones no, uh, to your, uh, to your uh, uh, intervention uh, after some time. And so um, at the outset, we were already discussing in the committee you know, uh, that uh, 
the situation really is that we have a limited statehood. Meron pa nga nagsasabi, failed state. Sabi ko, hindi naman. Hindi naman failed state. Kung failed state, edi, I don't think we have a government that's uh, still functioning. No? Uh, but uh, if you look at the typology, uh, which was uh, developed by Thomas Riesel, who's a uh, neo-Marxist and uh, a system, uh, system expert uh, himself, uh, one of the latest uh, in the uh, uh, long list of uh, uh, scholarly uh, literature in, in political science and the study of the state. You know, uh, any system change has to look at the kind of state that we have. No? So, uh, pardon me if I will go into this uh, broad strokes before I go to the uh, regional level. Because, you know, when you empower the uh, local governments and the regional level, you have to provide the right uh, context, the right environment, so to speak. You have to uh, develop the rules of the game no? so that uh, you don't just lead them to their own uh, devices. And so, uh, from the uh, typology that uh, uh, DC developed, I thought uh, of uh, of relating it to previous uh, scholars' uh, work. No? So there's difficulty steering hierarchically compared to uh, more established democracies or the more established states. And this has been a debate um, in many of the fellows uh, I uh, shared some notes with in, in Europe at that time, and they're comparing Asians and, and uh, Africa, and uh, of course, uh, different contexts, uh, so to speak, uh, if we compare Africa and, uh, and, and Asia, but uh, there are sim very similar uh, experiences. No? So, uh, for example, when we speak when we speak of the network of dyadic uh, two-person reciprocities uh, developed way before by uh, by Scott, no, uh, you can very well cite and uh, relate it to the situation in Africa. You know? and of course, we have local scholars like uh, Abinales and Amoroso, uh, uh, Rivera, you no, know, and uh, Paul Hatchcroft who. We've always been debating with, not together with the Tony Michael Lucinto at the start of uh, this federalism uh, uh, project, no? Uh, and and uh, admittedly, there's a, you know the state and society and the challenge of evolving a modern state is still there, no? So uh, if you look at the uh, uh, table that's uh, developed by uh, Riese, uh, you can see that. Uh, uh, when you look at the state level, uh, it is uh, not as uh, effective in the sense that it really has the superiority compared to non-state actors like civil society, especially the private sector. Of course, there's uh, always been uh, always uh, been this uh, discourse on how much uh, business and those who operate the business uh, uh, actually. Uh, had in terms of control and uh, and um, uh, what we call this uh, influence no? as far as uh, how the government uh, works. So uh, it is, in other words, so this kind of limitation in the state is reflected in uh, the kind of political structure uh, that we have, no? and especially uh, rightly said by Dean Tapia earlier, we, we can't help but relate it to the situation at the local level, which we will definitely do siguro nabasa na ni Dean Tapia yung yung uh, iniisip ko no? yeah, he already anticipated that uh, we will have to relate it to decentralization and the now ongoing uh, formulation of the rollout of the Mandanas Garcia ruling no and uh, fortunately somehow we're part of that discussion and uh, I can uh, share with you some of the uh, some of those uh, exchanges uh, so to speak so you know, hindi uh, naman tayo naiiwan. It's not like we haven't been really doing anything you know, to uh, develop the kind of uh, public institution, set of public institutions, develop the kind of system that uh, uh, would uh, definitely uh, uh, meet you know, uh, the means and the context of the country. Tuloy -tuloy yan, no? uh, and I've mentioned uh, some of uh, these in this uh, slide. Uh, for example, in the uh, 
in the past we've had uh, efforts uh, like the Luzon Republic, Negros Cantonal Republic, the Federal State of the Visayas, the Biak Nabato and Malolos Constitutions. No? These are all reflected no, in the uh, debate between uh, Felipe Calderon and Apolinario Mabini. Of course, uh, the more often cited uh, uh, literature uh, written by Ceriza. No, and uh, you know, interestingly, with the, in regard to uh, the debate between whether we should uh, continue with the presidential system or adopt a parliamentary system, this has all been started by the turnaround of the late Claro and Recto, no? as he started writing in the 60s. No? So, unfortunately, we still have this uh, uh, kind of political system that's uh, grafted. No? Uh, from our colonial masters and uh, much as uh, we wanted no, to introduce and develop our own uh, system uh, we have also lost uh, all these uh, opportunities to be honest if you look at the kind of constitutions we've had and uh, how it uh, how these uh, constitutions were written uh, we can very well say that uh, uh, we have yet to have a constitution that has been uh, formulated in the same context as much of the free world you know, uh, have had you know, in, in their own uh, in their own situation. So, uh, in other words, um, if we uh, if we uh, look at uh, this uh, situation, uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm quoting here, you no, know, Stefan uh, et al. Uh, you know, there's a there's a debate uh, in in the idea of a nation state, which very much is a Western context. I'm sorry, I'm I'm being very academic in this regard. But recently, because of the new uh, states and the new democracies that have uh, uh, come out, no, as a result of uh, many uh, uh, developments uh, in the in international history. Uh, we've seen many of these uh, states uh, developing from already established nations. So, antawag nila instead of nation states, state nation. That the state has to be developed first, so that the nation can be enhanced or enriched, so to speak. No, like in the case of the Philippines, for example, uh, in uh, you know uh, last year, uh, I happened to have uh, supported a. a uh, it's a bio work of uh, it's a biographical uh, work, but I had to go through uh, some of uh, our uh, past, no, our political history, and uh, I was saddened uh, by uh, the discovery that Rizal himself was uh, arguing that we are of uh, Malay uh, race. Yeah, to a certain extent, yes. But if you are going to uh, review recent literature. You can uh, very well uh, relate it with the uh, uh, most recent researches on uh, language, on uh, archaeology, and uh, much of what we are right now, a good mix of everything from Asia to Europe, is actually Polynesian, including our languages. No? So, Stepan says, and uh, including his uh, uh, colleagues, uh, would say, we're sort of in a state nation. Uh, uh, period. No? Uh, for example, they describe it that uh, if at the time of the inauguration of competitive elections, a quality has only one significant group that sees itself as a nation and uh, there exists a relatively common sense of history and religion in a shared language throughout the territory, nation state building and democracy building can be mutually reinforcing projects. On the other hand, if competitive elections are inaugurated under conditions that are already politically robustly multinational, nation state uh, building and democracy building are conflicting logics. This is so because uh, only one of a given polity's nations would be privileged in the nation building effort, and the others would uh, not be recognized or would even be marginalized. I'm sure, of course, many of us can relate to this uh, uh, very short uh, description by our leading experts in uh, democratization uh, studies and the state uh, building. So 
uh, in the process, I couldn't help but relate it to, I don't know if uh, uh, you encountered the, the late Dr. Pablo Tanko, uh, Jose Cryan, no? uh, that was uh, Pata Bata Pata, you know, and I don't know, Clarice, if you remember 1992 when I started campaigning for uh, then uh, Vice Presidential Candidate Nene Pimentel. No? And, um, you know, uh, I was, uh, I was uh, very much, uh, uh, what's this, the understudy of Dr. Pablo Tanko pushing for system change at that time. Uh, third year college lang ako nun, no? And uh, we were already, at, you know, for a while I was, I was uh, arguing with him. Professor Kosa, I was working with him, but uh, it wasn't really simply that I appreciated everything he was saying. Kasi sabi ko, ulit ulit every time that there's a discussion every time there's a lecture in the graduate school is speak about parliamentary system why the uh, why the presidential system is failing and so on so uh, i would always argue you know whichever system as long as you have the same people it will not work but uh, now that uh, you know i uh, i fully understand no, the logic of uh, his uh, advocacy Eh, siyempre, na-appreciate ko na yung sinasabi niya. No? So, uh, he starts by telling me, you know, a, a constitution is called the constitution because it constitutes, it's uh, supposed to organize. No? So, kumbaga, yan ang uh, uh, basic ingredients, no? uh, so to speak. It is also called the charter because it charts the country's uh, future. In other words, if you look at the constitution, it's uh, supposed to contain the building blocks. No, it's the building blocks of. Uh, uh, in other words, it's the whole house uh, basically that defines uh, the political dynamics that uh, is uh, naturally, you no, know, uh, within uh, a particular country's uh, nature. No, so sabi nila ang mga pilit, You know, that's why I always argue, and I'm sure you've heard me parroting. Uh, uh, I repeating this over and over and over again in many discussions in many interviews that there's no such thing as bobo tante and that there's no such thing as uh, you know it's uh, it's our culture that explains why we're underdeveloped. No, uh, we have to distinguish uh, culture from behavior, and this is simply what this uh, slide says. No, and I would always uh, explain to my uh, students no, that, uh, for example, in the start of a semester before the pandemic, when you have to memorize your schedule, you would uh, always look at your notes and uh, refer to it uh, when it's time to change your subject, go to another room and meet your uh, professor in another subject. Pero di ba, after a week, no, uh, siguro kung talaga medyo mahinahin na memoria, no? After uh, the second week, you don't even have to look at your notes. No, text no? You will now uh, go to the next room and uh, your next professor because it's already part of your routine. No, it's now part of your system. This is also the same explanation why I would always uh, uh, cite no uh, motorists uh, from Manila who would normally find it difficult to follow traffic rules and regulations. That suddenly, when they get to Clark and Subic they in a snap follow traffic rules and regulations ganyan din sa skyway no lumampas ka ng 60 uh, uh, kilometers per hour mahuhuli ka and so you wouldn't want to do it again precisely because you already uh, uh, learned your lesson well you know essentially human beings regardless of uh, education uh, background no would have a basic uh, sense of harm and benefit. They're rational uh, creatures, you know, rational individuals. So, however, which uh, uh, way that they find it, uh, uh, able to think of uh, what's uh, best for them. So there's a fundamental importance of information. The reason why people find it difficult to choose the right candidate is uh, during elections, for example, is precisely because the system uh, always fail to offer you know, the best uh, candidates. Eh, hindi naman lahat pwedeng tumakbo. Eh. Hindi naman lahat nakatakbo in the first place. No? Uh, why? You have political parties only in name, who, which, uh, which rather uh, are organizations that uh, could not fund its own operations either. 
we have yet to develop this kind of uh, institutions in, in other countries. We have uh, political parties that are uh, public institutions themselves. In other words, they are as accountable as any public office is. They develop their own uh, professional bureaucracy uh, that is able to help uh, develop uh, would-be leaders and uh, uh, remain uh, supportive of these would-be leaders as soon as they uh, find themselves successful you know, in getting into office. But we don't have those. Okay. Uh, and uh, how can you even develop the kind of uh, participation that you expect the people to uh, have if uh, uh, there's very limited information that's available uh, you can always argue it's because you know um, when the administration fails to offer this kind of information blah 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 yeah yes and uh, somehow true but uh, even our media is quite uh, limited to that extent uh, again you can always argue there's this uh, new information technology yeah again but uh, how are you going to inform the public how to really uh, make use of the right <coughs> kind of uh, information, the reliable source of information? So in other words, we're talking of institutional support, which is clearly lacking in this regard, you know, from the nomination to election and running a government. Okay, so I'm going to so, in other words, when we speak of uh, system change, yun ang naisip namin kagad sa Concom. You can't just introduce a uh, change in a particular part. You have to look at it in a comprehensive way. And so we started with this, uh, with this, uh, 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 this uh, illustration. We have to take note of the vertical dynamics. That's uh, uh, basically the relationship between the uh, center and the periphery or the national and local governments, you have to look at the horizontal dynamics, the political system. And, you know, the debate that happened in the Concom, and Clarice knows this, no, has been quite uh, uh, heated no, when we were debating whether to adopt a parliamentary system or a presidential system. Natalo yun, natalo kami by one vote in the parliamentary system. Uh, but uh, eventually, uh, of course, after the uh, further discussions, the uh, favor uh, uh, this the advantage you know, uh, was turned to uh, the side of the presidential system. In a nutshell, these are the key features that we have in the biannual yeah. draft. As I was trying to explain earlier, we have to start with the basic political uh, tools and the mechanisms. We started with the political parties in the electoral system and established uh, it as uh, some kind of an institution that's uh, publicly accountable. We have to start uh, electing our president and vice president as a team. Again, uh, not only to strengthen the political parties, but to emphasize the need for them to work together as a team. Mm -hmm. You have a vice president that... Uh, uh, is only waiting for the president to uh, uh, become um, inutile or uh, uh, unable to discharge his functions and take over. No? We need to reconfigure the House of Representatives. Mr. the client used to be the PLLO guy there. And I'm sure, of course, you know yourself how uh, difficult it is to work with so many interests. No? We have, uh, you know, if you if you review, and this we, we did in the consultative committee, if you review the discussions in the uh, Constitutional Commission in 1986, iba yung iniisip nila for proportional representation. And fast forward, when you look at the adoption of the party list system during the time of uh, Fidel Ramos, iba din. In, in fact, the uh, House uh, at that time came up with a very comprehensive uh, proposal no? uh, that includes, uh, in other words, it's it's a it's a huge uh, system package that uh, not only uh, intended to introduce the party list uh, uh, system of representation, but uh, the proportional uh, system of representation, which is actually the actual or the real uh, 
uh, intent no in in the 1987 constitution and dovetail it with setting up of uh, real political parties eh mahilig tayo sa tingi eh mahilig tayo sa chop chop and so the result is what we have right now the kind of partly system that we have i'm not in, i'm not saying of course that's in the it, that it's entirely useless or what have you but uh, we know that it can uh, improve a lot further no we came up with the more comprehensive and demandable rights we uh, we insist that this uh, this government this president is uh, anti uh, human rights or what have you but instead uh, we came up with the tools that will ensure that this is uh, not going to be the kind of uh, of thinking anymore no uh, and uh, we made sure that uh, uh, constitutional bodies like the Commission on Human Rights and the Philippine Competition Commission uh, become more empowered and uh, become really uh, independent institutions, so to speak. Now, we can go to the uh, more uh, this. Uh, I don't know if I'm the only one experiencing this uh, situation when uh, sharing slides. Uh, in the Zoom, you know? but uh, anyway, my next slide is about um, uh, how we develop you know, the the regional um, governments. And, uh, there were uh, nine committees, uh, subcommittees then in the consultative committee, and uh, precisely because uh, perhaps they know of uh, uh, what I've been doing with local governments before, but uh, I was the one that uh, chaired no, the Committee on uh, Powers of uh, Regional Governments and the Formation of Regional Governments. No? I have been the Now, you stop my sharing. How do I stop sharing when my screen is uh, frozen? Yeah. Okay. Let me just uh, use the PDF instead. Para hindi na siya maghang. Okay. Yeah. No? So we're here now. Yeah. So as I was emphasizing earlier, uh, I thought that the best way to start is to do a benchmark. And that, that was the uh, consensus in the uh, consultative committee at that time. Uh, determine where we are right now. You know, and uh, that should be the basis of uh, uh, recommendations uh, moving forward. What kind of uh, uh, rules are we to introduce? Uh, if we are going to change existing uh, rules or existing systems, what would be the basis of which? And so I was, uh, I was sharing to them uh, some of uh, the, uh, these discussions, no? ongoing discussions in the centralization, not only in the, academ in the academe, but also in the actual governance side. You see, we have very limited uh, kind of uh, uh, planning no? and, of course, implementing uh, whatever is planned. 
first and foremost, we have a fragmented local government uh, uh, system of local governance. You can just imagine we only had, uh, if I'm not mistaken, something like 70, uh, 70 or so local government units no? uh, before. We now have uh, 81, including NCR. And uh, it's a good thing that, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the proposal to create two more Palawan, no? Pala 2 and Pala 3, lagi kong joke yun, eh, did not uh, push through. No? Because of this fragmented local uh, governance system, it's very difficult to uh, even start planning and implementing. No? Uh, you can very well start with the traffic situation in, in NCR. Tatawid ka lang ng tulay o tatawid ka lang ng kali, iba ng uniforme yung makita mo doon. And uh, entirely different, uh, uh, what uh, call this, uh, context or system no? uh, in, in traffic implementation. So uh, you can uh, not expect an integrated national, regional, and local planning. If you are going to look at the supposed uh, uh, regional development uh, councils, these are all... Uh, you know, uh, nothing more than uh, venues for discussion. If at all there are some uh, projects or policy proposals that uh, uh, is adopted by the region, uh, it's difficult to find out whether uh, some of it actually finds its way at the national level. In fact, the participation in the regional development councils are quite uh, one thing. Uh, if at all only the chair of the regional uh, development council uh, regularly attends precisely because he's uh, or she is uh, the chair. No? So in other words, um, if you need to do some kind of integration, it's very difficult. The province even is not able to do this piece precisely because of the political, politically fragmented setup that we have. Now, this is the reason why there is not much uh, incentive on the part of uh, national uh, political officials to uh, sustainably you know, uh, or consistently uh, support or uh, look at the local uh, governments as collectively uh, reliable you know, uh, partner, so to speak, in, in, in implementing many of its uh, uh, priority programs and initiatives. So you have vacillating support in this regard. Huh? So moving forward, uh, there were some points to consider that uh, we thought of. Uh, we have to consider or use uh, the issues of decentralization as benchmark. And, uh, and, and the purpose really is to develop an intergovernmental relation or an IGR system, which should have been there at the outset. You know, uh, uh, USAID through Asia Foundation uh, started an annual, uh, uh, which is a rapid field appraisal, you know, starting in 1993, if I'm not mistaken. For 10 years, annually, they were doing these RFAs. And you might be surprised, no? Uh, it's not only in the law where you don't find any mention of IGR, no? But there was uh, uh, not much an effort on the part of uh, whether the local or the national level to uh, evolve a kind of an IGR mechanism, one that is institutionalized. You know, in, in whichever country you uh, look at, you know, especially the more advanced democracies, whether you have a federal setup or a simply decentralized setup, there is always an IGR mechanism that's uh, there. Uh, in fact, I remember at one time no, uh, when uh, the German model was uh, uh, being studied, and I noted that there are uh, more than a thousand uh, mechanisms of intergovernmental relations. So that alone already tells you how uh, fundamental it is as a mechanism for the different uh, levels and layers of government to uh, coordinate. No? So we have to define the dynamics rather than just uh, insist. No? And there's always this, uh, uh, I have to say, no? uh, misplaced notion that you have to clearly delineate. You could probably uh, uh, 
make an effort to uh, delineate functions between the different uh, le levels of government. But whether you like it or not, there will always be some kind of overlap because one is related to the other, even depends on the other. No? Especially in a, in a situation that we still have right now where we have a unitary setup and decentralized uh, local governments. Now, uh, if we, let's say, uh, change the form and or the form of government and the political system, uh, we cannot simultaneously change the local system. So the current the LGU configuration uh, should not be revised at the outset. No? But precisely because you're giving the power to the regional governments or the proposed regional governments, uh, the power to uh, look after the local government units that we can't... Uh, uh, is this uh, take out the possibility that in time you will further uh, develop the local governance system? As it is right now, there are uh, uh, the fragmentation uh, uh, that is uh, uh, that characterizes local governance has uh, prevented some of actually most of the local government units from developing. There are those local government units that can even afford to uh, provide uh, is this uh, free. Uh, movies, but there are local government units that can't even uh, uh, this, uh, provide no, uh, uh, regular collection of uh, waste. No? And uh, there are some um, areas no, uh, in, in the country uh, where local governments have to find uh, ways to uh, cooperate so that they can uh, address some of their needs like uh, need for water. No, I know of uh, particular uh, units of uh, municipalities in the Samus Oriental that work together in order to address this uh, problem on water. No? Uh, and there are some uh, uh, local government units that uh, banded together to address the problems on infrastructure and so on and so forth. But imagine if there is an institutional uh, approach to all this, uh, what's this, uh, efforts to address uh, limitations or to address uh, recurring problems in governance and uh, that you don't have to uh, uh, this, uh, reinvent the wheel, so to speak, then uh, perhaps we can have a more regular uh, and focused uh, efforts on development no? uh, in the case of uh, local governance. So, uh, based on the foregoing, uh, this resulted to this uh, proposal, and you can find this in Article 11 in our uh, draft uh, constitution. No? We, uh, uh, so we uh, propose the uh, existing regions, no? 16 federated regions and uh, the Pansamoto and the Cordillera federated regions. Uh, to form part of the uh, regional government configuration in the proposed uh, federal uh, setup. And uh, as such, we thought uh, existing LGUs, provinces, highly urbanized and chartered cities and municipalities will form the regional governments. And uh, this is some kind of a, a compromise that uh, if uh, the presidential setup was uh, adopted and uh, retained in the national level uh, at the regional level we adopted the parliamentary setup we have a regional assembly composed of uh, representatives coming from component lgus not electing their representatives one part electing directly from the provinces and the uh, cities no? uh, municipalities are already counted in the representation with the province and another representative uh, elected regionally through a proportional system, a closed list system of proportional representation. Again, uh, consistent with the uh, objective of strengthening political parties and promoting um, a programmatic uh, kind of politics. Uh, you have existing regional offices, of course. No, uh, so uh, uh, we we uh, were wondering. Uh, what was the basis of the so-called computation of the very costly change? No, parang Mandanas Garcia ruling lang yan. 
it's not as if you're creating another pie no uh, for purposes of budgeting you're talking of the same pie you are just giving a bigger slice of it to another level of government which means that you already have existing regional offices no? uh, you don't have to uh, create new offices no uh, to uh, form part of the regional government uh, particularly the executive level at the regional level no? uh, or the, the executive department at the regional level you simply have to uh, have some of these regional offices uh, with functions already given to or proposed to be uh, adopted by the regional level of government uh, to be part of the uh, federated uh, region there are some key considerations of course no the shared sovereignty provisions have to be there in a, in a federal setup of course you know that this is a, a key feature it doesn't mean because you have a shared sovereignty that the, uh, any of the region can separate from the federation and from the federal republic if you have a particular provision in that regard preventing them from uh, separating but you have the shared sovereignty there to emphasize that the federal or the national government cannot uh, diminish the powers that are already given to the federated regions again we can very much relate this to the mandanas garcia ruling there was a debate then no, when uh, at the at the uh, early stages of uh, uh, debating how to implement the Mandanas Garcia, the, the landmark ruling. And uh, there was some confusion because they were saying uh, further uh, or uh, full devolution. You can't really say full devolution just yet because it's an, still an ongoing uh, process. I would rather call it further devolution or further uh, decentralization. And you're not uh, devolving, devolving more functions. You are, in fact, downloading programs and uh, projects, precisely because that's where the additional share of the local governments will come from. No? Uh, you still have the local government code anyway. And the local government code, precisely because it has yet to be rebuilt, uh, repealed and revised, that it is still the same basis for uh, determining what functions are with the local level. So the PAP uh, merely no, uh, specify further no, what these uh, functions are supposedly. And hopefully, uh, when it is implemented, it uh, results uh, really no, to uh, it's this, the streamlining or uh, uh, rationalization of the national bureaucracy. We have a very huge national bureaucracy. You can just imagine how we approach public administration. No? in this uh, part of the world. You have a problem with water, you create a department of water. You have a problem with OFWs, you create a department of OFWs. And you have so many different uh, agencies already existing. And I wonder whether there's an effort to uh, really make sense of the existing uh, uh, system of uh, public administration before uh, moving forward and, uh, and proposing the creation of more agencies, if at all we need to merge some of the agencies uh, as we speak uh, which has been the experience of other countries in this regard so uh, i mentioned that the uh, in terms of budgeting no fiscal sharing provision should be there uh, but we we can i, I would rather not uh, constitutionalize the provision on era because uh, uh, we we should allow no, uh, it to be flexible uh, especially for purposes of uh, further no, um, uh, understanding revenue generation both at the national and uh, uh, regional even uh, local level uh, the proposed federated region the fact that uh, we're suggesting it to be composed of existing LGUs is consistent with the uh, uh, shared sovereignty and the federated region should be uh, structured as we've uh, uh, been suggesting uh, you don't repeal the local government code and change uh, the local government setup when you adopt a new uh, um, form of government uh, so to speak this is how the fiscal administration looks like i uh, adopted it uh, from the slides of uh, i understand uh, uh, dean and uh, wendell are uh, also attending this uh, 
discussion. I adopted it from their slides. Now, these are the uh, revenue uh, mechanisms that we've um, uh, uh, suggested to be uh, with the regional government. Uh, you might uh, notice that some of uh, these are already with the LGUs uh, uh, right now. Uh, and for example, the real property tax. It doesn't mean that because it's there, it is now going to be a regional government uh, uh, revenue uh, uh, power. No, we placed it there just to make sure that it will remain with the local uh, level. Uh, so the federal government and the federated region shall ensure that taxation is uniform, equitable, and progressive. Uh, the 50% of all collected income taxes, excise taxes, value-added tax, and customs duties shall be divided equally among the federated regions and uh, that for purposes of uh, allowing uh, uh, some kind of a grants in aid that will assist uh, uh, lesser uh, regional and local governments that 3% uh, of the general appropriations would uh, be uh, reserved as part of the equalization fund. Let me end by citing to you uh, very well read and uh, uh, have to say groundbreaking work on uh, state uh, uh, new uh, state uh, uh, studies no? and that of uh, Asimoglu and Robinson's My Nation's Faith. You know, when we uh, speak of uh, uh, systems, we're speaking of institutions. And that the institutional structure that creates market failure, such as what we have, will also prevent implementation of interventions to improve incentives at the micro level. So uh, this is why uh, just recently, you know, uh, I wrote a short uh, online piece saying that we will never be able to elect the kind of government that we deserve. Di ba palagi natin sinasabi, we only get the government we deserve. But I would uh, rather say we'll never elect the government we deserve precisely because the system simply prevents us from choosing the right, the, the best people, so to speak. Uh, the system only allows a very limited, uh, uh, very limited choices, uh, so to speak, that we have to settle with the, uh, you know, what's acceptable. Ilang po, maraming salamat at magandang hapon sa inyo. I'd uh, rather have uh, more time for uh, questions. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Ed. No, uh, you know when you started talking, I was really. Uh, uh, it, it, it gives me hope, no, that you're never really giving up on the dreams we shared, <laughs> no, all together, no, with the uh, with PILG and the Filipino people. And I was really, you know, uh, I was really happy that on your last slide, you quoted one of the books that I'm reading right now, Why Nations mm. Fail It All. So mm. oh, it's really, oh, oh, oh. It's, in my, it's in my desk, no? So talagang, uh, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's uh, really, uh, you know, um, it's an idea or it's a signal that I'm actually going in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much, uh, Prof. Ed. And... Uh, at this point in time, I think uh, we have um, we have to have this um, uh, panel of reactor uh, uh, here present. Uh, we have um, um, attorney attorney Yusinko. Wait, um, I would like to introduce our uh, our panel of reactor for this afternoon. Um, uh, our uh, panel of reactor is uh, a non-resident research fellow at the Ateneo School of Government. He is also a lecturer of the, at, at the Institute of Law, School of Law and Governance at the University of Asia and the Pacific. He previously worked as the consultant of the office of, uh, to the office of Senator Coco Pimentel and is also a contributor in various Philippine newspapers, such as the Philippine Daily Choir, uh, Rappler, Media News, The Daily Guardian, Philippine Times, San Star Cebu, Asian Currents, Asia Times, uh, Channel News Asia, and uh, Asia Forum, to name a few. 
Uh, attorney Yusinko finishes uh, Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy from Ateneo de Manila University and his Bachelor of Laws from the Arellano University School of Law. He also obtained a, a master's degree in law and development from the University of Melbourne Law School. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present uh, attorney, uh, my compañero, attorney Michael Henry Yusinko. Attorney? Uh, thank, thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Yusek Ryan, for the introduction. And uh, thank you, uh, for the organizers, Hans Seidel, and of course, PILG and Clarice for uh, inviting me to be a reactor. Um, and also to Prof. Ed, such an excellent presentation. No? And we're very fortunate <laughs> that uh, we heard uh, those uh, insights and information from Prof. Ed. And uh, my reaction is really very limited <laughs> because uh, the, the presentation was so comprehensive and in-depth, no? So I just have uh, three points just to uh, really make a reaction to such a, an excellent presentation. The first one is uh, when Prof. Ed said, it's important to uh, set a benchmark in order to understand the whole, the whole effort no, of uh, changing the system that, or the, the pathologies in our system, it's important to establish benchmarks first. And I, that, I, I was really enlightened by that point, and I'm sure many of us were. And so my mind went immediately to the pathologies that uh, I have in mind. And the first thought that, I, that came to me was the Mandana's case, I, ironically. No? The Mandana's case actually points out a pathology that we are currently suffering. And that is our local governments is treated by the Supreme Court as mere agents of the national government. And that's very clear in the Madanas case. Originally, it was ruled in the uh, Magtahas case, which was a case before the local government code of 1991. But that doctrine that treats local governments as mere agents of the national government was carried over under the 1991 local government code. So there's, there's uh, an inherent contradiction because the local government code wanted to elevate local governments as partners in development of the national government. That's very clear in the law and also in the declarations of the author, uh, Senator Nene. No? And yet the Supreme Court in a couple of cases, including Mandanas, insist on treating uh, local government units as mere agents of uh, the national government. And that's problematic because that kind of relationship obviously reeks of an, an unevenness. And uh, uh, it's not a balanced and fair relationship, no? Because there, there is a principal and there is an agent. So what does that do to to the relationship of the local government and the national government. Uh, it undermines local autonomy, okay? And it undermines it by uh, enforcing that culture of dependence uh, that's prevalent in our local governments, in our local chief executives in particular. And that the term culture of dependence, that's a term co coined by Senator Nene himself. Uh, observing that most of the mayors, the governors uh, have that kind of a dependence mindset on uh, the national government, particularly uh, the president. No? Now, on the other side of the fence, the national government, because it, is a, it looks at itself as the principal uh, in that agency relationship, uh, has that uh, innate in resistance to devolution. So the national government has an innate resistance to share, of, to share power with the local governments, to, to devolve functions as well as resources. And that was quite evident uh, in the, after the 1991 local government code was uh, enacted. No? And even Senator Nene said that in his book that, uh, when they were deliberating on the bill, the local government code bill, 
a lot of uh, he he faced a lot of resistance from uh, cabinet secretaries at that time who did not want to devolve functions to the local government uh, units so that's the kind of uh, pathology that that treatment of local government units as agents of the national government that's a pathology and that's a benchmark that to my mind we have to realize you know, if we are to proceed with uh, decentralization or even uh, federalization, that's a pathology that uh, we have to keep in mind as a benchmark. So that's the first point. The second one that really struck me was the very first point that Prof. Ed said, and that was when they began uh, with uh, the Bayanihan, the drafting of the, the Bayanihan federalism draft uh, as a consultative committee, they, they were really convinced that they had the full support of the administration. And I was witness to that because uh, as Prof. Ed mentioned, we were engaged in debates no? uh, uh, in, in the process of drafting that, uh, that document. And it's also, uh, and he said, what he said actually struck me because he said, and I can be corrected Prof. Ed if, if I misheard it, that the support that they got from the start waned eventually. And when the moment came, when they were about to uh, announce that it was going to be really endorsed by the president, that moment did not come, right? It was at the 28, I think if I'm not mistaken, everybody was expecting an announcement that the Bayanihan federalism draft would be supported 100% by the president and the administration in the 2018 SONA. And I was also expecting that, but that never eventuated, that never uh, materialized. So that really, that really uh, struck me uh, because um, such a, you know, such a huge reform effort really needed the full support of the proponents of that effort. Absent that full support, okay, any reform effort is bound to fail. And this is what we saw uh, with the Bayanian federalism draft, which is very disappointing because that draft actually is the best of all the drafts. It was really uh, something that uh, uh, we should have been debating on, uh, not uh, in the proper forum, not in, well, I'm not saying this is not the proper forum, but what I'm saying in really in, in Congress, in, in, uh, in Malacanang, that is the proper forum for debates, okay? So it's uh, disappointing that uh, our suspicions that support for the Bayanihan federalism draft waned towards the end, hence uh, the failure of uh, the draft being endorsed by the president. And my last point, my third and last point actually relates to, to my second point. Uh, the Bayanihan federalism draft is not actually just about federalism. Federalism is more modest in scope. No? Federalism is really just about uh, setting the arrangement between two levels or multiple levels of government. Arrangement in terms of uh, power sharing, of resource sharing, authority sharing, and then devising uh, intergovernmental relations mechanisms in order to manage the cooperation, or collaboration and even competition between the different levels of government. That's really just the scope of federalism. But the Bayanian federalism draft really was an ambitious uh, uh, reform undertaking. And I think the term that uh, they used was, this was a grand bargain of reforms. And that was evident in, in Prof. Ed's uh, presentation. And it's so disappointing to me because had, had they had more time, had they had more resources supporting them, then 
the Filipino people would have benefited from learning from discussions and debates about the Bayanian federalism draft. Because, precisely because uh, it, it pertained to reforms that we need desperately, not just about federalism, not just about the relationship of the center and the local, but as Prof. Ed may, uh, asserted in his presentation, we need systemic reforms. And th those systemic reforms or the proposals of, for systemic reforms were embodied in that Bayanian federalism draft. And we would have benefited in discussing and debating about those, even if it was not later on adopted. Because as we all know, charter change is really a very sensitive issue uh, for us, right? Uh, there really is a trust deficit when it comes to charter change and the deficit hinders proponents of charter change or constitutional reform or however may, you may call it, hinders them from pushing it forward. Now, had the consultative committee had more time, had more resources and had more support from the administration, then maybe, maybe we, we would be in a different position now. Maybe we would be in a better uh, condition, at least mentally, in accepting a possible uh, charter change proposition. So those are just the three points that I want to share. Uh, obviously, uh, Prof. Ed's presentation was uh, elucidating enough, but I hope that uh, the three points that I share uh, added as well to the learnings of uh, this group. Thank you very much and uh, looking forward to the Q&A. Thank you, uh, Attorney Yusinko. So uh, I was taking down notes of the key takeaways that uh, Attorney Yusinko said, no? that local governments are not just mere agents of the national government. No, I was reminded of my thesis in, in my master's, master, master's uh, course, no? Yung Culture of Dependence, and that any reform needs support, and uh, this we have to you know, lobby all together, and that the Bayanihan draft is not just about federalism. It's, a, it's rather a grand bargain of reform. It's not just, uh, you know, it's, it's a whole gamut of uh, proposed reforms that we Filipinos need to bring to a level of uh, greater discussion. So thank you about, the, about that, uh, Attorney Yusinko. And uh, we come now to the open forum. Um, I guess we have a lot more questions here. And I think, uh, uh, Prof. Ed is uh, very excited also to answer these questions. I know uh, Prof. Ed to be uh, very engaging, especially, no, mas, mas gusto niya yung question and answer. No? So um, may I read the siguro the first question, um, if I may, uh, Prof. Ed, no? This is coming from uh, Daphne Holy Dean of, uh, uh, from Germany, no? Uh, sabi niya, may I inquire to you about two things, no? The first uh, question is, to what extent do constitutional bodies maintain their independency uh, from increasing influence of the president accumulating uh, power under his feet? How these uh, constellations compared to non-constitutional bodies? And the second question is, in what sense the constitutional reform uh, promises greater discre discretionary power in uh, to be exerted by LGUs while uh, while their capability remains lacking, no, uh, specifically in terms of finances, no. Is there any place for gradual decentralization? So, uh, Prof. Ed, uh, if uh, we want to yeah. respond to this major difficult questions. Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, thank you for that question, Daphne. On your first question, uh, we can very well see, uh, as it is right now, that constitutional bodies, like the uh, Civil Service Commission, uh, the Commission on Audit, you know, uh, the other constitutional bodies are, uh, I have to say, you know, uh, because of the political system, they are relatively more independent compared to other uh, agencies of government. No? Uh, 
course, it's uh, different when you talk of uh, agencies that are uh, directly with the executive department. Uh, again, mainly because of the political setup. That's why we were talking, and uh, rightly mentioned by uh, Tony Yusinko, that we're talking of a grand bargain. You cannot just uh, change the uh, what's this, the makeup of uh, local government units without uh, having to note the sources or the causes of the limitations. No? You mentioned this in your uh, second question and very much related to the reaction of Tony uh, Yusinko. Rightly said, of course, under the existing setup, no, the LGUs are agents of the state. And that's just expected precisely because we're still a unitary setup. That's why, uh, if you notice, I think I mentioned that only twice but thrice, uh, the point that uh, we are proposing that the current LGU configuration remains, no? but this time will now be under the federated region. Which has, uh, which enjoys shared sovereignty with the federal government, no? So that answers the issue of uh, uh, local government units being agents of the national uh, or federal government. This time around, they will be agents of the regional government. What's the difference? They will be their own agents basically because they form the regional government themselves, no? The members of the regional assembly. And, uh, and the ones that will uh, uh, make up and run the regional government are coming from the uh, local government units themselves. They can very well decide to retain, to retain whatever it is that they have right now, or they can very well adopt a new measure that will redefine the kind of, uh, of uh, relationship you know, and the collaboration that uh, is uh, provided for by existing laws. The, the point here is that when, let's say, for the sake of argument, no, uh, we're able to uh, really make uh, the change uh, happen, uh, we're proposing that we start changing the upper half, no, the setup in the upper half, no, and the change that uh, uh, are further, the further changes that are needed, uh, especially at the lower level, can now be done, you know, at the federated regional level. So that explains to you precisely the point of. Uh, of shared sovereignty. This time around, uh, it's no longer the national government that has uh, uh, what's this uh, 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 monopoly of uh, of planning and decision making. For example, uh, when we talk of uh, revenue measures that can be passed at the national uh, level, it cannot uh, happen without the expressed uh, uh, support. Or, uh, or cooperation by the federated regions. Ganyan ang dynamics eh. in a federal setup. You, you, the second chamber always represents the federated regions or the state governments. The lower level, uh, the, low, uh, the House of Representatives uh, represent the people, no? uh, the, the whole country at large. But the second uh, chamber always represents the uh, regions or the or the state uh, governments that's the that's the kind of setup that uh, uh, we thought might be uh, useful uh, to us it's our own configuration and at the same time as basis on existing uh, structures you know because you know, right now for example we have a senate that's uh, uh, well in the words of uh, uh, former president Quezon, no? it's uh, supposed to be a uh, what's this? A venue to prepare would be presidents. No? Uh, kaya elected at large. Uh, I don't know if uh, we can find a country where you have a Senate that, uh, you know, uh, has members uh, who are uh, elected at large. Uh, and this is one of the this is one of the reasons we think why uh, this uh, initiative uh, simply uh, did not fly. I hope that answers uh, your question, uh, Daphne. Thank you, thank you, Prof. No, thank you, uh, Prof. Ed. No, uh, there's another question which basically uh, is uh, touching on the very uh, topic that uh, we are, you know, we have this afternoon. No, this is from a. Um, this is from as an email question from Marcela Figura. No, would federalism really? really empower local government units, how and why? Ayan. 
that's the idea. Actually, you want to do federalism precisely because as it is right now, actually the answer is in the questions raised earlier. You know, the existing LGUs are agents of uh, of the state, and as it is, you no know, precisely absent the concept of shared sovereignty, uh, they can be easily uh, reconfigured by the national government. That's why I noted in in my slides that you have a vacillating support to decentralization. There are uh, administrations that uh, recognize and uh, make it a point to work with LGUs. And there are administrations that, uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, do otherwise. No? Uh, let me just uh, cite you an example. No? Right now, uh, when, uh, uh, when the pandemic uh, started, ilang LGUs yung nag-suggest that uh, using their own uh, funds, they will put up their own uh, testing laboratories. So how did the national government respond in this regard, particularly DOH? Hindi daw pwede. Eh, they're not, the local government units were not asking funds from the national government anyway. They simply wanted to do their part and help in, the, uh, in arresting or addressing the uh, issues uh, that comes with uh, the pandemic. Eh, bago gumalaw yung local government unit, kahit na pera nila yung gagamitin, you have to ask uh, uh, imprimatur from the national government. It's very much the same example used by the late uh, Senate President Nene Pimentel in his book. Uh, when he was mayor of Cagayan de Oro, he wanted to buy four dump trucks. But when the, finally he was allowed uh, by Malacanang to buy dump trucks, they, uh, the city can only afford to buy two. No? So you can very well understand the, not only the delay, but the, uh, what's this, the uh, limiting, even crippling no? uh, 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 dynamic no? uh, between the national and the local government. Now, you want to put it at the regional level because even if you uh, give more powers at the local level, the limited context of the local government units, that's why I have been emphasizing uh, the fragmentation that characterizes uh, uh, local governments. Can you imagine? No, I've, and again, I've been, I've been saying this uh, for the longest time uh, in 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 public hearings, in in Congress, in in debates, in in you know, uh, what's this, uh, interviews, in the news, and so on. That if you simply have to compare uh, uh, our provinces, for example, no. Uh, we, how many provinces we have? We have now 81. Ilan mm -hmm. ng provinces in Indonesia? Nag-increase na. Naging 33. No? You can just imagine how big a size difference between the province of Indonesia and the provinces in uh, the Philippines. Ilang, ilang ano ang size ng, ng munisipyo sa atin? Only a uh, mere 80 square kilometers. Malaki pa yun, ha? Meron ng city, albeit of course it's a historic one, uh, vegan, which is less than 30 square kilometers. Compare this with the villages or uh, the equivalent of barangays in other countries. Mas malaki pa. So, yun lang management, yun lang planning, uh, traffic management, yun lang refuse uh, collection, and so on. All of these are affected no, by uh, the, what's this, the very uh, limited uh, character of some of our local governments and it's very much politicized if you compare misamis oriental which is a lot uh, uh, considerably bigger than lanao del uh, uh, norte no? the next uh, province for example how many municipalities do uh, lanao del norte have it's uh, about 40 if i'm not mistaken there are only 26 municipalities in misamis oriental no so you can very well uh, understand the direct relationship between public administration and politics. Magkaiba dapat yun eh. Kasi sa atin, politics is partisanship. Iba yung politics, that's real politics, that's uh, uh, defined as who gets what, when, where, and how. Because if we define politics and practice politics in that manner, that uh, explains to you the close relationship supposedly between politics and program formulation and implementation. But lo and behold, in our case, it's not. No? Politics is merely partisanship, wanting to know who you are working with and why you are uh, what identified with a particular group. And that's all that there is. So, 
Kaya tuwing election, we always uh, want to insist that uh, uh, let's have a uh, what's this a uh, platform or a program driven elections. Of course, we should not stop no pursuing that direction. No, but uh, under the existing setup, I don't think that we can uh, get uh, far than uh, 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 what uh, talking about it in public because how the candidates will respond will always uh, the, depend on the on the uh, expectations set by the political system. Bakit ka mag, why, why would you uh, tie your hands to a particular specific position when? You know, uh, you can very well enjoy some new way when you win elect you win the election. Ganon ang ganon ang system na talaga. No, we can't avoid it. Thank thank you, Prof. Ed. No, uh, the sec the next question is quite sensitive. No, uh, you may choose not to to answer this question in public. <laughs> or, you know, uh, ito kasi ako if, if I will be asked. No, this is quite a sensitive question. No? Uh, the question is. Uh, was uh, from uh, one of our viewers, no, or one of the participants here in Zoom, no. Sabi niya, why was the Bayanihan federalism not supported by the administration? So please enlighten us. Tasagutin ko yan, no. Of course, I cannot give you specifics because I cannot uh, present to you evidence, uh, direct evidence in that regard. But uh, you know, at the outset, we felt, uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, we needed more support. Uh, let me put it that way, and uh, I'm sure Clarice knows that. No, uh, in in the, the many resources that we could have uh, enjoyed uh, then, uh, wala eh. Magre request ka palang. It will take time, and uh, perhaps the public should know that we were not really given uh, salary. We were given allowances. No, just to give you a concrete example of uh, the kind of uh, support if you call that support as far as the consultative committee is concerned but still we return no uh, at least uh, and uh, our uh, colleagues can bear me out in this uh, can help me with the exact figure but if i'm not must uh, if i'm not mistaken at least about 50 million pesos were returned to uh, malacanang no na supposedly sobra sa, sa operations namin and uh, which we wanted to uh, use to campaign for the for the draft but uh, again that did not happen tapos nung campaign na eh, yung magka-campaign nilvice pa yung draft <laughs> so eh, so <laughs> paano mo patapan ma, ma reconcile yan eh, you know for a while we thought uh, the train was uh, was really moving uh, already because uh, we already met with uh, uh, with the leaders of both houses of congress and there were some agreements already made in, 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 in that regard and then suddenly there was a change in uh, in political leadership in the in the house of representatives no and uh, again of course you know already uh, how it happened no? so uh marami, marami. in other words you don't even have to identify who's uh, uh, really responsible for for uh, uh, you know uh, our failure to go around in the campaign but to be honest no uh, and uh, i can be corrected in this regard because uh, for example uh, some of our friends in the in the provinces are attending this seminar each time that the members of the consultative committee were invited in a forum in in, in a discussion that uh, while uh, uh, before the forum there are uh, considerable uh, opposition uh, to it uh, the moment you are able to explain to the people uh, what the draft is all about and uh, what's the logic of each uh, provision and so on, almost uh, almost uh, immediately, no, or, or right after the discussion, we get more support, and uh, we could have sustained that. Pero yun na nga, eh. hindi nga nagtuloy tuloy yung ganong kwan, no, and. Uh, uh, buti na lang we 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 got help from. Uh, Organizations like PILG uh, and, and the Hans Seidel, uh, Stiftung, and several other organizations. But uh, absent those, those uh, support, eh, siguro mas maaga pang natapos yung, yung initiative. Uh, we're not yet done, to be honest. Uh, we still need uh, 
every now and then, uh, led by uh, retired Chief uh, Justice uh, Renato Puno, uh, with our very limited uh, uh, resources, our own personal resources, we still, um, you know, try to uh, continue the advocacy. Again, I'm joined here by uh, Ding and uh, Wendell. Uh, both of them are the ones uh, doing the uh, actual uh, ground uh, work, uh, so to speak. No, and uh, 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 again, the, the same reaction. No, uh, when whenever there's a discussion at the local level, uh, we get we get more uh, uh, support uh, from the people. Thank you, Prof. No, uh, kami sinabi ni Attorney Yusinko kung nabigyan lang kami ng oras eh, yes. siguro medyo maganda-ganda yung nangyari. Yeah, and and also I I am also privy to that. Uh, the money uh, na, na binalik talaga ng konkome, no? So medyo, yes, yes, medyo yes. hindi nga talaga siya naubos, no? And uh, medyo mahin, mahi, mahirap din kasi yung mga processes, no? Nun sa sa office. Exactly, exactly no? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, um, there's another question is, I'm really, you know, I'm Prof. Ed, no? Medyo ano rin ako dito, eh. I am also interested here, no? Ito yung BARM, no? Uh, ang, ang tanong niya is, how about the BARM? How autonomous is it when it is under the office of the president? No? Med, medyo kakaiba kasi ito eh. Uh, the BARM is, you know, uh, is asynchronous, di ba siya? Ika nga doon sa, uh, ibang iba siya. It's sui generis, ika nga doon sa mga regions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Prof. Ed. Um, you know, much as I would like to understand it in the same lens as uh, uh, yours and Tony Yusinko and the other legal luminaries that uh, commented in the creation of BARM. Uh, and while I have uh, taken part in the uh, uh, work of the BTC before that uh, drafted the uh, Bangsamoro based law, which has uh, which became eventually the Bangsamoro organic law. Uh, my simple reading of the 1987 constitution simply uh, uh, suggests that uh, there are there's still very much room for the national government to either uh, fully support Bang or uh, to reconfigure its support and by reconfigure meaning probably lessen its support. Uh, at the end of the day, when you're talking of a unitary setup, the national government can very well revise existing uh, political dynamics or existing political structure at any time. Kaya nga crucial yung concept ng shared sovereignty. If the other partner no, doesn't allow or doesn't agree uh, to such change, eh hindi pwedeng mangyari yung change na yun. This is why uh, to my to uh, our understanding in uh, in consultative committee and uh, incidentally no uh, no less than the speaker of the Bangsa, uh, of the barn parliament was uh, uh, a fellow member of Quancom uh, uh, speaker Fang Lian Balimbong who also served as deputy speaker of the House of Representatives uh, for some time no? uh, we uh, we were uh, really uh, insisting that absent a remarkable uh, change or uh, revision of uh, the 1987 constitution, a, uh, the future of BARM or the future of any regional government for that matter significantly still depends on the sitting president or uh, the administration. Yun yung problema. So even if let's say the momentum is uh, uh, it's this uh, already there, Sustaining it is another question. There, there's a question here from a former student of mine. Uh, position on the BARM extension. I'm for uh, BARM extension. Uh, why? So many reasons. Supposedly, it started in 2019, but actually the, the, the transition happened uh, or can uh, started only in 2020. The budget for 2019 is not for BARM. It's for ARM. Dawa kasi yung mandato ng barn no? to govern and to transition. So the transition part is absent in the 2019 budget. Of course, hindi ko pa, iba pa yung delay dito sa budget. No? 2020 happened. And of course, again, 
the budget is already there, except that the pandemic happened. And you can very well see how it impact, uh, impacted on uh, the whole country for that matter. Still, if you look at the performance of BARM uh, in 2020 no, and uh, up to now, uh, I would have to say it's, uh, it uh, is uh, still remarkable. I have to say uh, commendable. No? And damning uh, uh, new developments and, and the uh, what uh, much needed regional laws uh, are um, being worked uh, on by marami nang napasan, the civil service code, uh, the administrative code, and, and so on and so forth. Yung electoral code medyo nagtatagal, but uh, to my mind, mainly because it's uh, obviously a uh, mainly a partisan uh, document and it will uh, it will really take time because uh, so many of the different interests uh, would uh, different uh, would uh, definitely uh, lock heads in this uh, regard. Uh, just this morning, I uh, attended a meeting with uh, with uh, JICA wanting to assist in this uh, in this effort, and uh, uh, I noted that the electoral code is still being reviewed uh, by Comelec. Note that uh, Barn is structurally different; no? it's a ministerial or parliamentary. Uh, system and which is very much consistent with our proposal in the Bayani and uh, draft uh, constitution. So, uh, in other words, if we um, let's say, for the sake of argument, we uh, do elections uh, for bar, uh, let's say uh, it can happen, uh, meaning you already have all the required the districts uh, are already parliamentary districts are defined and that. Uh, uh, in other words, the whole electoral exercise is already put in place. Then the question is, will there be continuity? Yun nga eh, hindi pa natatapos kasi yung transition. Para sa akin, patapusin mo yung transition, you strengthen the uh, supposed uh, uh, institutions that are uh, uh, included in the so-called, uh, in, the, in the blueprint that is the Bangsamoro Organic Law. And that's the time that you let it... Uh, you know, operate uh, uh, as a regional uh, government uh, in its entirety. Eh, ngayon, eh, lukewarm, eh. No? Lagi nating sisisihin na naman natin na, ah, you know, it's because of culture, blah, blah, blah. But uh, it, whether we like it or not, the, the national uh, uh, the national setup uh, is also affecting uh, the operation or the sustainability of uh, BARM. Ito, recently. Meron ka ng existing IGR mechanism. It's very much uh, specified in the Bangsamoro Organic Law. Eh, gusto pang pumasok ng Senado to uh, put in public and review the operations of bar, which is okay, fine. But uh, to my mind, you already have a mechanism in place. Why not use that mechanism no? instead of politicizing the whole process? Medyo hahaba tayo dyan ang... Um, you say, Ryan, kung uh, pag-uusapan pa natin further. But uh, I'm, I'm just glad that many of the questions that uh, are being raised are very much uh, uh, not only related to um, the, the, the advocacy to uh, change the form of government uh, from unitary to federalism, but uh, looking into the existing uh, problems that uh, uh, are supposedly uh, addressed, no? Uh, by the by the effort to change the system thank you thank you prof ed no uh, actually uh, there's a lot of questions in the chat box but uh, due to our time oh, constraints no, I, I know but i would like siguro to just you know uh, accommodate this one last question which i think is very very uh, hmm. uh, practical for those that are watching via facebook live and uh, those in zoom no it's a very practical hmm. question no uh, from uh, Lance Russell Cano, sabi niya, how do Filipinos feel about the federalism? Will the poor be uplifted from the poverty? And will the federalism perpetuate the current government in power? I think this is uh, the, the common question of, you know, uh, common people, no? Outside of the academe, no? Talagang ito yung very common na questions, very practical questions that deserves really, you know, a very good, you know, response, especially from you, Prof. Ed. <laughs> Alam mo, hindi uh, ko masasabi na overnight magbabago ang uh, mga bagay-bagay. No? Na, oh, 
Okay, nadapt natin yung federal setup, ma-address yung poverty situation. Not really. No, it will take time. But uh, giving more option at the local level and reorganizing them and uh, amalgamating them, this has been the uh, what's this? The action of uh, my predecessor in the local government development foundation, Dr. Claudio Susmeño, no? amalgamation. Because it's fragmented. Eh. No? So the, the, the direction is precisely to amalgamate the currently fragmented local governments. And that alone already tells you that the need really is to empower uh, local governments, empower them in the sense that uh, yeah, uh, there is partisanship, but uh, that partisanship can be translated or could be goaded uh, to be more programmatic, so to speak, that the discussion, the uh, intramural, so to speak, or the uh, political uh, exercises uh, would be directed to more programs instead of uh, uh, empty, uh, uh, what's this, uh, competition between uh, between uh, political uh, entities or, or personalities. Now, siguro ganito na lang. Let's uh, try to uh, uh, use an analogy. No? Uh, I'm not sure if, uh, uh, how, I'm not sure of the age configuration of the participants, but I suppose you know Michael Jordan. Huh? Michael Jordan, when he retired, thought he can try his luck uh, with another sport, baseball, if I'm not mistaken. And he spent some of, uh, some time in the, uh, ano yata yun, no? hindi pa yung major league, no? minor league ng baseball siya naglaro. But uh, he did not uh, make waves, so to speak. He was not uh, successful. Bakit? He was a good sportsman. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, siguro, he, he was still at the top of his uh, uh, game, no, when he retired from the NBA. In other words, he were he was still fit and could very well uh, uh, what uh, uh, sustain the rigors of uh, the sport that is baseball. Pero hindi siya naging successful. Iba kasi yung rules ng baseball eh, sa basketball. At ganon din pag kinumpara mo yung soccer o football, yung uh, pansinin mo yung mga sumisikat sa football, eh, mga sikat din yung team nila. Eh sa basketball, yung sikat na player, pag lumipat ng team, yung nagre-resonate, yun lang pangalan ng basketball player. Kasi personal personality focus yung basketball eh. Pwedeng maging superstar basta talentado ka, no? uh, pwede kang maging superstar. Pero sa football, kung walang uh, significant uh, support ang team, hindi nagtatrabaho yung team, eh hindi ka din sisikat. When you change the rules of the game, the behavior of the players changes at the same time. It's like saying, for example, that if you are a president and you're so dumb and so abusive that you don't, uh, even if the people want you to resign, you will not resign because there is no mechanism for such. Sabi nila, wala daw sa, wala daw sa kultura natin na pag, may, pag nag parliamentary system, yung prime minister magre-resign. Hindi ho. Kung prime minister ka in a parliamentary system, of course, no? and you're prime minister, uh, there's no other way for you but resign if you want to save face. Kasi uh, you would rather resign rather than be kicked out of office. Mas pangit yun. So it's not culture. No? It's the rules of the game that make people behave in such manner. We have become so negative, Elena. You know, and, 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 and I sometimes uh, hate it, especially when I hear from uh, uh, many of our uh, fellow Filipinos who have uh, already uh, left uh, the country and started uh, uh, living abroad. No? And, uh, you know, I would rather uh, we uh, make an effort, a really good one uh, effort to change the system and uh, find out uh, how it's uh, going to impact on uh, everyone's day-to-day -day lives. It, it's, it, it's happening sa mga, alam mo, nung nag-decentralize tayo noong 1992, hindi naman natin nagbinig yung napakaraming lugar na magaganda pala dito sa Pilipinas eh. Kasi hindi sila nagpo-progreso. 
Pero nung nag-decentralize tayo, marami nang naging quote-unquote islands of good governance. If you remember that uh, phrase no? sometime in the early 2000, precisely because we uh, started reaping the benefits of empowerment at the local level. So if that is not uh, uh, what uh, at the very least is starting to address the problems uh, of uh, poverty, then I don't know what will be. Thank, thank you, Prof. Ed. No, uh, actually, we're we're over time. No, it's already four o'clock. Oh, and <laughs> oh, medyo marami pang questions. I think uh, uh, we can just uh, send the questions uh, to Prof. Ed. No, and uh, the BI, our staff in PALG would uh, facilitate the the answers. No, to the questions. No, and truly, this discourse, uh, I believe, uh, you know, uh, as Prof. Ed and uh, and Attorney Usinko. Uh, I believe should not die down, no. Even if you know, uh, may iba pang uh, uh, administration na dumating, no. Because I believe that this is a part of our quest for good governance, di ba, Prof. Ed, and real empowerment exactly. at the local level. No? So, exactly. as also in my part, uh, belonging to the academe, I would always, I would always encourage, together with Dean Emerson Tapia, no, uh, as the dean of the University of Makati, no. I would always would encourage the public to re-examine our established systems uh, and, and routines as we, you know, we chart the, the country's future. So uh, we're, we're almost, uh, you know, kulang na tayo sa oras, but uh, it has been a very fruitful uh, activity this afternoon. And uh, to finally close uh, uh, our program, I would like to call on... Uh, uh, the commissioner of uh, the Commission on Human Rights, uh, Attorney Gwen Pimentel Gana, for her closing remarks. Manang Gwen, Attorney Gwen. Oi, salamat, Attorney Ryan. At saka na po, I'm so happy na nakita ko ngayon si Professor Ed Tayo. Very, very salamat nice po, uh, discussion <laughs> and very informative. Nako, Prof, thank you talaga. In behalf of uh, the PILG, po. again, we would like to thank, thank Professor Ed Tayo. Yes, and Attorney Henry Usinko for sharing with us this afternoon their expertise on the subject. And thank you also to Hans Seidel Foundation for our continued partnership, to Attorney Ryan Esteves, and of course to Dean Ed Tapia for your continuous, palagi ang supportive yan mga yan. And thank you everyone for attending PILG's lecture series. Uh, as what uh, was earlier said, federalism is a very relevant topic even at this time of pandemic. The issue of governance has been highlighted more so now than ever, and our system of government is put in question. Therefore, discussions on federalism must be kept alive so that we citizens will be informed and aware that there is an option of a different political system that can possibly provide good governance. And as mentioned by earlier by Professor Tayao, a grand bargain of reforms which we very much need. So let us all keep an open mind and heart in understanding and discussing what federalism is. Once again, thank you everyone for spending your afternoon with PILG. God bless us all. Thank you. Salamat thank you, Madam Gwen. And uh, thank, thank you. you. Congratulations uh, to PILG and uh, Dohan Seidel. And of course, to our uh, resource persons, uh, Prof. Ed Tayao and uh, Attorney uh, Michael Henry Yusinko and also to the rest of the of the participants here present. Uh, Clarice, you have a, a few more words before we wrap up our afternoon, Clarice? Yes, again, on behalf of the Pimental Institute for Leadership and Governance, we would like to say thank you so much to our speaker, uh, reactors, moderator, of course, and of course to our dear participants. Thank you, thank you so much. Hoping to... Hope to see you again on our next lecture series. Thank you. Keep safe, everyone. Salamat picture po. taking, Mona. Picture taking. Yes. Okay. Uh -oh. Open their videos, no? May we request everyone to please open your video? Okay. One, two, three, smile.
Thanks, Clarice. One, one more. Good to see you, Sir Noel. Nandiyan ka pala. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Last. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Director Tom. Thank you, Clarice. Thank you. 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 Thank you